What a beautiful morning out here in Washington, D.C. It's absolutely stunning to see the break of dawn. And on Easter, we like to call it Resurrection Day, believers by the thousands are going to be streaming to the Lincoln Memorial and the Reflecting Pool area to worship Jesus Christ in his resurrection. And we are here this morning to just explore a little bit the uh, prophetic word the Lord gave from uh, the book of John, chapter 19, talking about Jesus, Pilate, and justice. You know, in Jesus' time, it's pretty obvious, right? Uh, the system of Israel and the system of Rome really needed a judicial overhaul because uh, Pilate, the, the governor of Israel found no fault in Jesus, found no fault in him, and yet he delivered Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus is examined both by Pilate and by the religious structure of the day in Jerusalem. The chief priests were pushing for this, what they considered to be a vagabond, uh, who was usurping the religious structure of the day, they wanted him gone. I mean, he had raised Lazarus from the dead. He, he had performed many miracles, but when he raised Lazarus from the dead, from that point on, the, the council uh, decided that Jesus had to go. So there was an incredible dialogue between Pilate, the governor of the Romans, and the Jewish priests. Now keep in mind that these Jewish priests are the ones that were supposed to fulfill the Davidic mandate of opening up the gates of heaven and bringing the horizon of heaven to the earth. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary situation when you understand that they were seeing the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Pilate was saying, behold your king. Behold the king of the Jews, shall I crucify your king? And the response of the rulership, the priests, the chief priests, the ones in charge of the temple, the ones that are stewarding the very temple of God and therefore the covenant of God is, we have no king but Caesar. I was reading through John 19 early in the morning, dawn was breaking forth and our prayer room area there overlooking Washington DC and I'm reading this passage and I I must have read it probably you know hundreds hundreds of times but I, I didn't realize what it really said you know we've been making declarations for some 15 years no king but Jesus I didn't realize that the Jewish priests made a declaration no king but Caesar we will have no king but Caesar it just stunned me while they were looking at Jesus. And you know, God gave us a word for Passover that the horizon you sow into will soon be at your doorstep. And in a haunting way, that prophetic word actually came to fulfillment back in the days of Jesus, back in the days of these temple priests. Because the chief priest made a declaration that the sovereignty of Israel does not belong to Israel's Messiah, but to Caesar. They literally, as stewards of God's covenant, yielded the sovereignty of the nation of Israel, including Jerusalem and even the Holy Temple, over to Rome. And after Christ died, rose again, the greatest verdict of heaven's court was rendered in favor of the saints and our eternal redemption was purchased by his precious body and blood 70 years afterwards caesar ordered the destruction of jerusalem and the destruction of the temple in what is known as the diaspora they sacked jerusalem they uh, tore down the temple so that not one stone would be found upon another. The Jewish people were scattered to the four corners of the earth. And there's this haunting diorama in Rome that portrays 
Jewish slaves coming in through the gates of Rome and therefore in through the gates of Europe in subjugation, facing hatred and malice, carrying the very temple menorah that once burned bright inside of God's house of covenant. And instead, probably the, the menorah that Judah Maccabee relit in order to reconsecrate the temple to the Lord, probably that very mantle was being carried away through the gates of Rome by Jewish slaves. It's a stunning, stunning reality. And, and I'm giving you a similar warning. I'm sharing all this because I feel like God is giving a similar warning for America in this day. That our freedoms, the freedoms that we hold dear, the freedoms that our forefathers in the faith in the United States of America lived for and died to entrust to us, they're in jeopardy right now. In a similar way, this Passover, this Resurrection Day, in a similar way to uh, the, the way the freedoms of Israel were in the time of Jesus. I pray that the words of Abraham Lincoln will haunt you, that you will make it a declaration, and that God will manifest these very words before us all. That this nation under God shall receive a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. We need a born-again experience. Let's be like the believers whose uh, 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 faith became activated through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's embrace again our covenantal foundations instead of yielding them to an antichrist spirit. The chief priests, literally, they yielded their authority to the global governmental structure of the day and the symbol of an antichrist who was literally mandating that Jerusalem and Israel come under the subservience of Rome, of this global governmental structure. I, I want to say, and I hope that you will join me, where the chief priests declared, we will have no king but Caesar. Let your declaration resound in your homes, in your spheres of authority, in your churches, and across Washington, D.C. in this nation, we will have no sovereign but God and no king but Jesus. So what's ahead? The Lord just spoke to Jolene about the shaking of nations. I believe that to be true. But let me give you some prophetic encouragement here. Uh, just a couple days ago, I was talking with Jolene about the Ashbury revival, which sprang forth in a powerful way and then just seemed to fade away. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me that the Asbury Revival is like a first blossoming of the cherry trees. That's a sign of the harvest to come. I wanna say this again, prophetically, the Asbury Revival was as a first blossoming of the cherry trees. It's a sign of the harvest that is very soon to come. That's a great, great encouragement for me. I hope it is for you too. Because remember, the horizon that you are sowing into will soon be at your doorstep. And just as uh, Aaron's rod, the, the, the almond tree that budded, Jeremiah saw the, uh, a rod of an almond tree that budded. And the Lord said, this is the sign that I am hastening my word to perform it. That's what's going on as of Passover 2023. The Lord is hastening his word to perform it. He is hastening the harvest. Listen, your life right now may feel like this tree, kind of looking a little bit dry, a little bit brittle. But do you see the harvest buds? Do you see the buds that are a sign of a beautiful harvest to come? That's not a lie. The Lord is not teasing you. He is going to bring in this season the harvest that he promised trust in him remember the horizon that you have been sowing into will soon be at your doorstep so i hope that encourages you the way it encourages me we are going to see for israel for the united states of america for the nations a fuller expression of the release of the spirit 
and power of Elijah, the anointing to return the hearts of the fathers and mothers to their children, the hearts of the uh, children to their mothers and fathers, and the hearts of all to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an exciting time, but we're in a vulnerable time as well. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you this Passover, and may you receive the harvest that Jesus ordained for you. May Jesus receive the rewards of his suffering in the nations of the earth.